Welcome to another episode of Titan PI TV, where we're looking at the inside workings of a live operational investigation agency, that being here, Titan in Derby. Thank you for listening to another episode. I'm your host, Simon Henson, and also my Managing Director of Titan Private Investigation Limited. Today, we are going to be looking at how do GPS vehicle tracking devices work? So there is a number of elements to a GPS vehicle tracking device. Obviously, you need a GPS vehicle tracking device. You need a GPS satellite. You need a wireless network, uh, you need GPS servers, and you need a, a device to view the tracker on. So let's go through it, how it actually works. So you have the tracker. The tracker finds a satellite. The satellite then reports back to the tracking device to tell it its exact location, or generally within five meters. That then sends that information to a GSM provider. That GSM provider then sends it to servers, which are generally in a cloud, and then that cloud then shares that data with a device, whether that be a web application or a tablet or a mobile phone or a laptop. And then we're able to see where the vehicle or whatever the device is attached to, its exact location, its speed, direction it's heading, and it records all this information so you can watch it live time or at the end of the day, or at the end of the tracking period, potentially a week, it records all the data so you can see exactly where that vehicle it has been, and it's broken down on a map, or you can have it in a text format. Brilliant tools. They cost £350 a week for seven days of tracking plus VAT, so that's 420 They can then be extended week on week after that, but the minimum tracking period is um, seven days. So because tracking devices are generally 7 to 14 days deployed, they are temporary. They are not hardwired in. It would be a logistical nightmare to get access to a vehicle to hardwire it in, plus we'd need to have some sort of electrical qualification in case things went wrong, or to stop them going wrong. So tracking devices generally have their own power supply with them. They are generally magnetic and they stick to the vehicle in places where they will not be found. So the information we need to know is where is the vehicle parked overnight because we generally approach it in the early hours of the morning when there's a low footfall. We can do, if it's garaged, do it at different locations. That may be in the day, but that's not preferable. And we'd need to know the make, model, colour and registration number of the vehicle we're deploying it to. So there's a certain amount of preparation that then goes on. So we will be doing some reconnaissance, unless you can tell us the lay of the land, whether there's cameras, whether there's security lighting. If you're not able to tell us that, or you're not willing to tell us that, we will need to do a recce. And that recce will be looking for exactly those elements. We'll be looking for video cameras. We'll be looking for CCTV. We'll be looking for security lighting. And we will be working out where we will deploy from to get to the address, and then what is the rest route, best route to the address if there is security lighting, etc., so that we avoid it. If we're not familiar with the vehicle we are putting it on, we will find a donor vehicle of the same year and model, and we will practice on that vehicle so we know exactly where we're putting the device. And this cuts down the amount of time that we're under a vehicle in the early hours of the morning because there is always an element of luck. And we need to make sure it's well hidden. So... Catch-22 here, we want it well hidden in case there's some spontaneous maintenance on the vehicle and it goes onto ramps in a garage, for example. We don't want it found. Having said that, the tracking device needs to be able to see daylight so it can see the satellites and then it can give its GPS location. So that's why it's important to be well versed with the vehicle we're putting it on and the place we're hiding it is a place where the tracker will still work. So let's look a little bit of the areas of the law. A tracking device is only to be used as a surveillance aid. Everything we gain from a tracking device is intelligence only. It is not to be submitted into a report. It is not to be submitted into a family, civil or criminal court because it's a tactic. And it hasn't actually got any weight as evidence because it just tells you where, for example, a vehicle's been. It doesn't tell you who's driving it. It doesn't tell you who's the passenger's. Once it gets to the location, it stops. It doesn't tell you if other people get in the vehicle or where the subject goes or the driver. So it's purely intelligence 
as a surveillance aid. An example of that, it might be that we don't have a routine for our subject. So we put the tracking device on to find the best times of day um, that we should put a surveillance on so we are not wasting the client's money. It might be that we don't know where that vehicle's going so we're using to pick up some sort of routine before we deploy the surveillance. It might be we deploy them at the location that we've got from the tracker. So it is purely um, an aid to surveillance. Like with everything that we do, we need to do the legitimate impact assessment, which I always struggle to say, LIA. We need to make sure that what we are doing, what we've been instructed to do, is justifiable. It's accountable. It's proportionate. It's achievable. And it's necessary. If the answer to any of those is no, then we go back to the drawing board and we'll look for another tactic. And the final area on law would be trespass. If, for example, we are being asked to put a tracking device on a vehicle, it's past the LIA, but the instructing party, the client, uh, does not own the house and the driveway where the vehicle is parked, then we would be committing a civil trespass because we are not invited to be on that property. So that's something you need to bear in mind. Trespass, yes, very minor offence, but if we're being professional, we would rather not trespass. So we need to think of other ways or other areas we might be able to get the tracking device on if that's the case. That is tracking devices in a nutshell. If you'd like to know any more about tracking devices, then you could attend one of our courses. We run a five-day RQF Level 4 surveillance course in association with the Institute of Professional Investigators. It's based at our Derby office and tra training facility, and we have courses usually every year in February, May, September, and November. Thank you once again for listening to another episode of Titan PI TV. Please give us a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel so you don't miss further episodes. Thank you very much.